we will be looking at the femoral triangle. So to identify the femoral triangle, first of all, we need to have the orientation of this prosected specimen and we need to look at the landmarks again. This is my anterior superior iliac spine and this is where I have the pubic tubercle. And can you see this whitish structure which extends between my anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle. This band like structure is my inguinal ligament. An inguinal ligament is the lower folded part of one of my oblique abdominal muscle and that muscle is my external oblique. It's the lower folded part of my external oblique muscle. And then we are familiarized with this muscle and this muscle we know that it is also emerging from my anterior superior iliac spine and it goes obliquely and it reaches medial side of my thigh and this muscle is my sartorius muscle. After that we can see there is another muscle which is located medially and this muscle is coming from my pubis bone and this muscle is adductor longus muscle. The place where sartorius muscle crosses over the adductor longus muscle. This crossing point is making the apex part of my femoral triangle. So this is the base, this is the apex, this is the lateral wall and this is the medial wall of my femoral triangle. After making its boundaries, then we let's talk about what are the contents and then we'll look into the structure who makes the floor of this triangle. So we should start medially and the most medial structure where I'm locating my probe, my probe is going into the femoral canal which is normally empty. It lodges a lymph node called lymph node of holocoid. In normal situation, this opening is closed. Lateral to this empty canal or the femoral canal, this structure is my femoral vein. And what you can see, the most interesting feature, look at this structure which is opening within my this femoral vein and that is my great saphenous vein. Lateral to my femoral vein, this structure is my femoral artery. The most lateral structure which has been lifted up, that is my femoral nerve and that is coming from my lumbar plexus and this nerve primarily it innervates the muscles who are present in the anterior compartment of my thigh and these muscles are quadriceps, sartorius and another muscle which you can see here which will be which is we'll be learning shortly and that contributes in the floor of my femoral triangle. This muscle is pectineus. So pectineus, sartorius and these quadricep muscles, all of them are innervated by femoral nerve. Now let's look at the structures who are making floor of my femoral triangle and what we can see the laterally placed structure is my iliosos tendon. Now let's look at this iliosos in the upper part above my inguinal ligament and you can see here very clearly visible to you the sauce major muscle. Usually there is another muscle which is lying above to that that is sauce minor but that has not been shown within this prosected specimen. And then we are looking at this muscle. This is my iliacus muscle. So iliacus and sauce, they are joining together and they make one common tendon called iliosauce. So iliosauce is located laterally in the floor of my femoral triangle. And if I look at medially, this is the muscle which is known as 
the pectineus muscle. So these two muscles are contributing in making the floor of my femoral triangle. So the point comes why we are spending time in learning this femoral triangle. What is the clinical significance of this femoral triangle? There are various measures, various factors which contributes to its clinical significance and these factors are we can record the femoral pulse at this location because it's very superficial and then we can have a good access to femoral vein and this femoral artery during various catheterization procedures during procedures of hemodialysis so there are various factors and another very important clinical factor you remember I talked in the beginning about an empty canal which was the most medial structure so this empty canal in some individuals it opens up and who are these individuals usually these are females and in females after multiple pregnancies and secondly the female pelvis is wide so this femoral canal is more vulnerable in the females to open up and once it opens up now what happens the content of my abdomen can protrude into the femoral triangle and this condition is known as the femoral hernia. 